to the Magi Book, episode four. It's been a while since we've been on, a couple months actually. Uh, Myers Josh has been on, or as we call him here, one take, has been on a bit of a sabbatical. I've been working a whole lot. Um, we've been working on endurance testing, so I've worked a bunch of days in a row, 19, 12 hour shifts in a row. Um, but I can't complain because there's one person in the world that I know works more consecutive days than me, and that's this guy. Uh, record being 40, yeah, 40 days and one day off and like another 30 some on this is insane. That's one take for you. Anyway, we've gonna, that was Alex Wong as our fifth featured member of Magi Book. Um, today we are in the offices of Magi Book, as you can tell from the extensive library. Um, there's, we cover all different subjects here at Magi Book. Uh, you know, you might see something in the background that piques your interest. Anyway, um, one of the things we're going to talk about is kind of the layman's view of a magician. I don't know if any of you have had a scenario when you've gone up to somebody or, or mentioned that you're a magician and you get this, ah, oh, yeah, my kids like magic, or oh, no, I don't want to see anything. Um, there's this perception, and uh, it's talked about extensively in, in, in various texts behind us here how the reason why the layman has this view is because the majority of magicians out there are actually the amateur's amateur. So they happen to know one or two things, call themselves a magician, and perform in a certain way that doesn't hold a standard to what the, the craft is about. Um, so we want to play for you an example of that. Um, anything else you'd like to add? It's funny stuff. Let's see if we can get him to say more than 10 words this episode. So we're going to check out this clip and then we'll come back and discuss it. Thanks for signing in. Toodaloo. Oh, by the way, there's, uh, you're going to be able to win something, but here's a clip. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Now I want to show you a trick out of the disappearing otter of Houdini's rope. Thank you. Now, Udini will... I will make the, the rope stand on end. Thank you. Now for my next trick. This one is dis the disappearing cigarette. Here I have a cigarette holder. As you can see, completely empty. Oh, now I'll get out a pack of cigarettes. Excuse me a minute while I get in trouble here. Here we are. One cigarette. I will place the cigarette inside. And here we are, disappearing cigarette. Yeah. Now, here I have here one Visa card. I'll make it change into a five pound note. Yeah. Now, for my last trick. I like to make a £10 note disappear and return again. As you see, one piece of card. We'll place the £10 note inside. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night, boys. Thank you very much. I enjoy sleight of hand, I do. <laughs> That's uh, Paul Norris, he's a cabinet maker. Uh, he's worked in holiday camps from some children's parties and more. I thought he was going to do some comedy, but uh, a bit of magic there. Act number two, Tony. Hello, Paul. Hello. How long have you been doing that for? Well, ever since I was small, really, you know, yeah. since the age of ten. 
You were, ver you were very nervous, weren't you? Very, very nervous. Well, it's my very first time yeah, of here. Course. It was understandable there. You need much more patter, and you need to prepare your props better, because, I, I, to be honest with you, I, I think I'm right, Faith, I didn't understand what you did with the, the cigarette. It, I got so fascinated, you couldn't get the cigarette out of the packet, I think. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> Something went wrong there, did it? Well, a little bit, yes. Yeah. So, uh, that trick didn't Well, that's work. the tricks of the trade. They all go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they all go... Well, they, was it meant to go wrong, eh? No, it wasn't. Oh, I see. I did, uh, 20 on that. 20 points from Tony. I've got a lot of work to do on the act, my darling. Give me and some I, points, please. As it stands, I can only give you 18. So. 18 points from Faith. <laughs> OK. Good luck to you in the future, Paul. So, you're going to say? Yeah. I should never give up. I should keep going. That's Come brilliant. Back. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Excellent. That's it. Yeah. You enjoy it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed you as well, Paul. Excellent. OK. 20 points from Tony, 18 from Make the Faith, makes a total of 38 points to act number two. So that was uh, Paul Norris. Um, he was very lucky with the audience he got. They were very forgiving. You do that on, like, America's Got Talent, talent, you will get, uh, he would have got massacred, would have got slaughtered, but they were very nice to him, and then he talked about how you know, he should just keep going. And I admire that he he loves magic that much. Um, disheartened because he gives... Like, in the future, other people who have seen that performance might think, Ah, eh, that's magic. You know, it's silly and it's kid stuff. And yeah, my, my kids like magic. And, you know, it, it gets dismissed. You see people like uh, David Blaine's first street special. I, I know a lot of... Or I guess it was called Street Magic. A lot of people criticized that, a lot of magicians criticized that because it was simple effects, but it was simple effects performed pretty well. And his genius, as uh, Penn Jillette said, was turning the cameras around. You got to see the reaction of his audience. If we saw the reaction of Paul Norris's audience, it would have been brutal. It would have been, <laughs> it just... Ah, oh, I feel bad for that guy. I actually did a, a, a Google search for him, and I couldn't find him. One take said he's probably a member of the site, and we're just... <laughs> we're slaughtering this. But anyway, um, so one of the ways that people become better performers, better magicians, is learning from those that already know how to do the craft. And we've got our member, uh, Bill Smith, who uh, shared with us a, a performance and a story about meeting a great magician and, and a lot of, one of the cool things about our line of interest, our hobby, our, our art, is that a lot of these people are accessible. Whereas if you're like really into music and you, you know, your favorite artist is super famous and well-renowned, you can't ever talk to these people. Um, but in magic, I believe, I mean, I've almost got to meet everybody I've wanted to meet, and they've been really easy to talk to and exchange ideas with. So with this being a transition, let's uh, go to the Bill Smith performance, and then One Take has some extra thoughts as well that we'll come to. Um, he may send it to you telepathically. <laughs> he may blink it in Morse code. I don't know. I, I don't know. So here's Bill Smith and uh, his... Uh, it, to really talk to Bill Smith. He's got a lot of stories, this guy. I really hope that he contributes more to the site because uh, there's just a lot, of, a lot of good knowledge and background that this guy has that I would like to, other people to have. Um, so anyway, Bill Smith. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, this cute and quick little card effect is called Presto Switch, and it was invented by Argentine magician Fernando Chiops. It uses the four aces, and I'm going to take a black ace and a red ace and place them back to back, just like that. And the same with these two, the red ace and black ace go back to back. So that when we square them up and hold them in this fashion, the blacks are on the inside, the reds are on the outside. Reds on the outside, blacks on the inside, 
Watch him change. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Red's on the inside. Black's on the outside. I'll do that again. Red's on the inside. Black's on the outside. Watch him change. One, two, three. <laughs> black's on the inside. Red's on the outside. One, two, three, four aces. Now, a little interesting information about this trick. Um, Fernando Kiaps lectured at the 1985 Texas Association of Magicians Convention. Uh, and in 1985, I happened to be living in San Antonio, so I went to the convention, saw him lecture, saw him do this effect. And when he did this, every magician in the room was just in awe of it. They had their mouth, their jaws practically on the floor. When he showed us how it was done, every magician in there, I will always remember, was hitting their heads and going, stupid, 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 because it was so incredibly simple. Now, I'm not going to show how it was done out of respect for Fernando Chiaps and magic in general, but I just wanted to say about the man that something I will always cherish, a memory I will always cherish, is that after his lecture, I was out in the hall outside the room where he lectured, working on this trick, and he happened to come along and see me, and he stood there for about 30, 45 minutes talking to me and, and making sure I had this down before he left. And I will always cherish that, and uh, if you're out there for Nando Kiops and see this, or if a friend is out there, maybe you could relate this to him, uh, that, that meant a lot. That really meant a lot, and I really appreciate it. So I hope you all enjoyed my rendition of Fernando Kiops' wonderful, cute little, quick card effect called Presto Switch. Take care. <laughs> so that was Bill Smith uh, talking about the importance of actually meeting an inventor of, of an illusion and that person taking the time to actually explain and go through all the little technical aspects of it to make sure that he performs it correctly. As we saw, Paulus, Paulus? <laughs> Paul Norris <laughs> earlier uh, didn't have that luxury, I'm guessing. Uh, but Josh had some thoughts. He was not, he didn't have any pattern. You know, it was, he was like he was reading from the from the directions. That rope standing still, he could have talked that out a little bit more, and uh, it, it would have been pretty cool. That was uh, I thought that was one of the better things that he did, that yeah. moment of the the rope being suspended and then blowing on it and having it go down, but there was no reason talk, yeah. for it. He didn't even talk about blowing it down. He just did it right after he made it stand up. He could have talked it out a little bit more. Yeah, there, there's a big uh, important thing with magic is, that I think this is a Vernon idea, that um, you have to have a reason for every move you do, because if it looks suspicious, then the, the audience is going to be like, well, something odd is going on, and obviously that's why it's happening. As opposed, if you have a reason for any move that you do, then it all looks natural and therefore becomes magic. Incomprehensible. Becomes a mystery. And they start thinking about the trick and not, you know... Not, how is that done yeah, as opposed done? to, wow. Yeah. That kind of a thing. A lot of people experience magic feeling like that you're uh, combating them. You're trying to show that you're more clever than they are. No one likes to feel like they're the fool. Um, so setting up your stage so that they're not put in that position... That being said, I do a three-card money routine. I do a couple routines where I do actually set that standard up where I always come out on top. Um, but most of the time, what I try to do is create magic so it happens only because the two of us are working together. Um, there's some other tricks to that. Vernon used to... <laughs> Vernon used to... He, he noticed that um, guys, you know, boyfriends or husbands would get kind of jealous when... Uh, he was performing magic and then be, you know, wanting to show up the performer because, you know, I got to protect my image to my partner. Hey, <laughs> wife would be jealous. But anyway, <laughs> but Vernon used to do things such as, you know, nudge somebody and say, hey, don't worry about it. I'm going to tell you all about it later. Or, hey, we're in on this together. I like that approach. Vernon never told the people how he actually did stuff, but he put them at ease and let them know that it's okay because you and I are on the same page and we're doing this together. 
we're in on the secret. They don't know the secret, even though his new confidant doesn't know the secret. So uh, a big aspect is just being prepared. Um, that's one of the benefits of joining a magic community is that you can uh, practice your, your routines. You can have other people critique it in a, in a positive way and let you know that you know what you're doing isn't quite working and they can tell you why. And you, know, you have other individuals that understand what you're trying to do and they can lead you in the right direction. Um, so let's take a simple effect, but done very well by our first member, Frank DeVille, uh, doing a, a, a packet trick. I hate the term trick, but I'll use it because that's the term. <laughs> but he does a routine and um, we'll talk about some aspects of what he does after this. Also, we do have a giveaway coming up. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. Nice. Anything else? No, that's all. Silence. <laughs> Silent one take. Ta-da! Yay! Now I'm going to show you one of my favorite card tricks. This is one of the first tricks I learned, and I don't normally use magic cards, but for this trick, I'll make an exception. You see, only a magician would have this many of the same card all together in the same place at the same time. And these cards don't even need me. I just like to watch. You see, here's her trick. One ace jumps on the pile face down. And just like magic, all the aces turn face down. Then an ace jumps on the pile face up. And just like magic, all the aces turn face up. Here, look, I'll do it again. An ace jumps onto the pile face down, and just like magic, all the aces turn face down. And once again, an ace jumps onto the pile face up, and just like magic, all the aces turn face up. Now, they had a pretty good trick, but there was one small problem. See, one of the aces turned out to be a real joker. And he sort of dragged the others along, and though some were reluctant to change, eventually they all changed. Now the aces believe with the proper influence, some of these jokers could be turned back into straight aces. But that was doomed to failure from the beginning. For not only were there a bunch of jokers in the pack, but all the aces came from different backgrounds. So that was Frank DeVille uh, doing a nice uh, packet routine, uh, wild aces of sorts. Um, but he had so many different elements going on at the same time. One, he had the he had the effect down pat. Like you know, this is not something he. This is the third time he's trying it. He also has his patter. There's a reason for this. There's a story behind it. You can follow that. And to go even an element further which I don't know if he planned on because it's just kind of a YouTube teaser kind of a thing. Um, but he had music involved, and it crescendos at the end, which I'm sure was intentional. Um, you can find these kind of uh, kind of preparatory tools in, fit, in the Fitzky trilogy, and oh, there's a bunch of different things. Uh, Jack McBride's uh, Show Doctor, which I know a lot of you enjoy, and just, you know, thinking about magic more deeply. Uh, Lozander talked about how he had uh, a physician friend of him, or of his, of him, of his, that said, what you do is a lot like playing an instrument. And Lozander asked, how, how do you mean? He's like, well, you can learn, you know, you can learn why a violin works and, and why, you know, certain sounds happen from a violin. You can know that stuff, but it doesn't mean you know how to play it. And that's the same thing that we do. We perform magic. It goes much deeper than knowing how a trick is done. Um, there's, I'm sure you've all heard when you perform magic for somebody, how'd you do that? You say, you can look it up, you can go to a library, and they go, oh, that's all right, I'm just going to look it up on YouTube anyway. Well, you can do that. And you can learn the secret, but that's not why it works. I, am I right here? You're right. I mean... If you do try to figure it out and you do see how it works, you're not going to be able to perform it for your friends because it takes for, forever to learn. It take, yeah, you, you have to have the practice, the reasoning behind it. We talked about Vernon and, and the method of there's a reason for a move. You don't just make a move to make a move. I've seen a lot of performances out there and I'm sure I still do it. That's why I go to, to my local magic club 
so that when I perform something, they can point out, why are you doing that move? And I can be like, well, because it's necessary. And they can say, is there a way you can cover that up? Is there, can you come up with a logical way why you're going to hand something from one hand to another when you don't have to? And sure enough, there, there's a way to figure that out. You just have to, whether it's grabbing for another object, whether it's just adjusting something, there's, there's all kinds of things that you can actually do. Um, you can use magnets. <laughs> magnets. Who, wait, what, what's that clip from that? Pete Holmes. Pete Holmes. Peter Holmes. You should, uh, we don't have the rights to, to put this on, but you should check out Pete Holmes on Conan O'Brien doing his bit about magic. Probably a lot of you have seen it. It's fantastic. <laughs> what are you saying? Well, it's magnets. This guy's flying because of magnets. Like, what do you mean? He, his, his pockets are full of magnets? The, the ground is magnets? That would look horrible. I think that's just two things this guy doesn't understand. I don't understand, mag I don't understand magnets, and I don't understand magic. And so... <laughs> this is magnets. <laughs> <laughs> so... Let's see, where are we going from here? We got on a nice little tangent. I'm glad that we got Myers Josh talking for one I time. Ever. Maybe I should just keep my mouth shut. No, yeah, you, you know. no, I want you, you to talk. It very often. I'm going yeah. to punch you in the skull. Fracture my skull again in the fourth place. <laughs> Arrested Development. If you guys haven't checked out the latest episode of, or latest season of Arrested Development, that's fun. There's a lot of, a lot of magic out in Hollywood nowadays. That's an important thing to talk about. Um, but first, let's play a performance by, oh, I don't even know what we got in the player, but check this out, and then we're going to come back with a contest. This is going to be something awesome. I just don't know what it is. <sighs> Prepare for Magi Book. <laughs> See you in a bit. My next guest is a comedian whose new album, Impregnated with Wonder, is available now. Please welcome back the very funny Pete Holmes. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Oh gosh, it is. Uh, it's wonderful to be here. I was, uh, I was actually just in New York. You ever uh, hail a cab just to stop it from hitting you? <laughs> Never know what to tip those guys. <laughs> big week in my apartment building this week. Very big week. The uh, the phone book arrived. <laughs> yeah, thank God. I don't know how I was getting by without the phone book. <laughs> Opened the door, it was staring up at me from the floor like, here, we printed a portion of the internet for you to throw away. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to tell jokes. Uh, <laughs> I'm just so glad I'm not a magician. <laughs> Have you taken a moment today to be grateful that you're not a magician? There's so much pressure. Comedy audiences come out to have a good time. Magic is the only kind of entertainment where 90% of the crowd is trying to ruin it for themselves. <laughs> Go to a magic show, just a sea of closed-minded, threatened dudes, just like, nope, no way, that ain't possible. Mirror, some sort of mirror, you ain't sawing her in half. Like, yeah, you did it. You proved what none of us were trying to prove. The boy on stage is not actually a wizard. <laughs> and it's always dudes who mirror, no, no way. Girls are into it. They're like, there is something more. <laughs> That's how you should be. That's how I am. I love magic. Look at my friendly open face. I sit in the front row. Do I volunteer? You're damn right I volunteer. <laughs> a magician drops his fake thumb. I didn't see nothing. I want to believe. <laughs> I live in a non-magic world all day. Make it magic. <laughs> I was at a show recently where I saw a man fly. Listen to me. I didn't misspeak. A man, a wingless mammal, took flight. You're not thinking, imagine if I flew right now. If I could figure out the muscle in my butt that I need to flex, I'm, that's working, and I just took off. I flew above the audience, picked some of you up with me, we flew around. Best night of our lives. And I saw this, and suddenly I'm eight again, and I'm filled with majesty. And the guy next to me, I don't know this guy, who's this guy? Leans over me and goes, some magnet. <laughs> magnet, he can't fly, magnet. <laughs> First of all, 
shut your mouth and enjoy the show. Second of all, that explains nothing. What does that mean? He stuffs his pocket with magnets? The stage is a magnet? That would look terrible. I think those are just two things he doesn't understand. Like, I don't get magnets, and I don't get this. This is magnets. One time I had two pieces of metal, they wouldn't touch, then I flipped one, then they would. That's how he flies. Must be very frustrating too for the magician because there's no noise to make when you see a magic trick for the audience. With comedy, it's very rewarding because there's a built-in biological response, which is laughter. But with magic, there's nothing. You can see the best trick in the world, whatever noise you make sounds condescending and fake. It can be like, okay, Pete, what was your card? You can tell me, tell us now, what was your card? It was the three of clubs, okay, yeah. And you signed it, is that right? You signed it, yeah, okay. And then you put it in this barrel of fire, is that correct? We all watched as you placed it in a barrel of fire. Yeah, and the whole time I was blindfolded upside down in a tank of water, is that correct? Yeah, it's back, three of clubs. And now it's all on you and you just have to be like, whoo. Ah. Not what I expected. That must suck. I mean, it's the dream of every magician in the world that there would be some sort of involuntary knee-jerk response to seeing magic. That they would be like, the tiger was over here, voila, it's over here. And people would just be like, magic! I love your magic! You don't want to make this noise, you have to make this noise. Then there are people that don't quite get the trick, but they fake it. They're like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Magic. Oh, the tiger moved. Thank you very, very much, everybody. That was very silly. Appreciate it. That was great. Thank you very much. Hilarious. Again. Again. Pete Holmes. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Stick around. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Pete Holmes. Uh, Myers Josh, one take, turns to me and is like, you know, you can just link that. And I was like, you know, I do now. And so we did. And you guys got to see what we were talking about. And you can see that I didn't prepare, you know, because I did my kind of rough version of what I remembered. But you can tell that Pete Holmes prepared and had worked on that for a long, who knows how long. And it's hilarious. And I think we can all relate to it. Um, I think it's important that we get to our contest. Mad Hatter Magic Shop. So I, I was saying I'm done giving away stuff for a while. Because it was costing me a lot to, to ship stuff out internationally. Which is nice if I had more money than I knew what to do with. But that is not the case. However, I talked to Mad Hatter Magic Shop and they are saying... That they, what was that about? That they, uh, they are willing to start uh, giving out some things once in a while. And, and today, they're going to hand out a $10 gift certificate, uh, which will be emailed directly to you. There will be a code that you get. Um, so we're going to come up with a uh, competition. Rate. Now. <laughs> so it's important that we're having this contest and uh, good old Mad Hatter Magic Shop is uh, giving away $10 for free. Thought I'd advertise a little bit for them. Luckily, my host Josh has allowed himself to be the Vanna White of <laughs> Magi Book. <laughs> da -da -da -da. All, all kinds of things. Right. Uh, okay. They have all kinds of things on sale. Uh, this is the Jack in the Box. This is the Nesting Coins Brass, one of my favorites. All these things I got on sale. Um, like, for instance, uh, what is the name of this guy? The rattle box. So the rattle box is empty. You can vanish something in it. It can, sh you can hear it inside, but then nothing's in it. You hand it to them and they shake it. No sound whatsoever. So something pretty cool. Five dollars, normally 11 bucks. A very solid mental epic slate, um, Really good. 65 no, I'm sorry, $57 typically on sale for $35. They had um, 
a whiteboard version that I bought, which is nice. But I, I like this because it shows up better on stage. The, the, you don't have as much of a reflection. Um, let's see what else we have. Oh, the Art Wells table. The black Art Wells table. Uh, you look in the Tarbell course towards the end, um, and we happen to have all of those issues for our members for free. So you can look up routines and things. Uh, I think it's typically like $60, $70. Um, it could even be more than that. I like this one. Um, and it was on sale for, I don't know. You'll have to look it up. I think it was 40 What was it? No, uh, never mind. I, I think it was uh, $40. So, Mad Hatter Magic Shop has a special section, and you click in there, and I assume they have an overabundance on that. I actually got my whole Tarbell course, the uh, the new version, um, for I think 70 bucks, which is crazy. I mean, there's so many volumes to that thing, and I mean, you can get most of that for free. They, the, the Tarbell course, they updated a little bit, they rearranged, and then there's two editions extra on the new version that you can get as well. Um, they also have one of my favorite effects, and I think it's, I mean, it looks like real magic, the spirit bell. Now, used to, there'd be an elaborate pulley system with string, and if you pulled the string just right, you'd get it to ring. But the version they have on sale, you don't need string, and it will ring whenever you want it to. <laughs> Did you just pull a string? Now it's angry, so it's just going to ring non-stop to shut one take up. Anyway, this typically is $500. If you go on most sites, it's about 500 bucks. Um, there are some kind of knockoff sites that you can go to or, you know, out of, out of country and you pay, you make that up with uh, the, the payment for the shipping and stuff. But it's 250 from from Mad Hatter. And I mean, this thing is just beautiful. You can show your hands clean. You, you can have people holding on to your hands and then ask questions and the damn thing will ring. It's cool beans, man. <laughs> All right. So that brings us to the competition. It's going to be a trivia competition. The first person that gets this correct um, and private messages me, unless you want the duties. Duty. <laughs> Do you want the duty? What else? All right. So the first one that sends, oh man, I almost want to give the pressure to you. All right, fine, do All it. All right, one take wonder. Now you got to find his profile. His name is Myers Josh. Very privatized. You're not going to really find it very much. <laughs> All right, send it to me. Let's just make it simple. Send it to me. You can send it to me. Well, it's now they're all confused. They don't know who to send it to. That's another trivia question. Uh, <laughs> if you can decipher the code, all right, <laughs> send it. So it's got to be one of us. Send it to him. One take, one wonder. Myers, Josh, or username that one guy. That T H A T, the number one guy G U Y. Or Myers Josh <laughs> upside down. Yeah. Good luck with that. Um, so that's part of the deal, uh, but you have to answer two trivia questions. The first person to do this successfully will get a coupon to Mad Hatter Magic Shop, which I love. I think they're fantastic, um, and I've talked to several of their staff. They're just good people. Um, they will send you, once you answer that correctly, you're the first one, you'll get uh, a code in your, your email. And so when you answer the question, send Josh your email as well. Or if you want to wait till you find out, yes, you were the first one, then you can send them the email. Um, they will send you a code to do that. So here are the two questions. I will start second. <laughs> first, what's the first question? I, are you really asking me that? Yeah, yeah. Come up with something, please, for us. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so those are the different things that Mad Hatter uh, offers. Well, they offer way more than that, way more than I could say. But I almost forgot that we wanted to share a clip that our fourth member, member Michael Dedant, um, 
displaying what it's like to be a really polished magician. This guy is fantastic. He's won close-up awards. Actually, he's, he was just in a movie um, called Trailer Park Jesus. If that title offends you, that's not a movie for you. I'll just say that much. <laughs> but it's very funny. He's a very talented guy. Um, this is him performing at the Winter Carnival of Magic, and something goes wrong that's unplanned. But he just rolls with it, and you got to remember, he's performing in front of a bunch of magicians. So he plays to his audience, and he does it very well. So we'll, we'll watch this, and then we'll come back and then give you the rules for the contest. So here we go. Magic is much better when you're on hallucinogenics, and since some of you aren't, um, I brought with me, don't get excited, I don't have enough for the whole class, but I brought with me these, aha, 3D glasses, that's right, 3D glasses, and actually, sir, if you, you're going to get to experience this in 3D, if you want to put those on for me, there you go, actually, and you could stand right here so everybody can see how silly you look, yeah, put the, just stand right here, if you don't mind, yeah. Well, you can do it from there, that's fine. Whoa, I'm just gonna set the table down for a minute. <laughs> I would help with the table, but my arm is like this for a reason. <laughs> totally oh. Now I need this more than ever. <laughs> Yeah, this is what happens when you dry clean your close up mat. <laughs> Line, you got all that on video? Absolutely, sir. Awesome. Okay, so that goes there. This was the handbag. We got this, and this is that. Thank you for the tip. <laughs> Wow. So much for, I'm not doing the levitating table anymore. <laughs> uh, so, oh, that, that's no problem. Yeah, I have that trouble sometimes. That's why I have medication. No, uh, so if you want to put those on. And right here in my invisible handbag, look at this, what a surprise. I have another fork. Now I can relax. <laughs> Question number one, who is the famous individual that used to perform magic at Disney World with J.C. Wagner? Question number one, very famous person. Question number two, who got their real big start by running up to a politician, biting off a button from their suit, being drug off away, telling that politician to look at his suit, and seeing that the button had been restored, fully sewn, just as well as it was before. Answer those two questions, send it to that one guy, and you get the $10 to Mad Hatter Magic Shop. Fantastic shop. We're going to end our, our episode of Magi Book with a montage of Howard Thurston. This is also uh, available in our credit store, so you can... Pr I don't know, it's just in our public domain library. You don't have to spend any of your credits which are free anyway, but you can download it for free or, or there's a link to YouTube, you can watch it. So we're going to end with that. We'll see you guys next time. Whenever that might be, will be when he's not working <laughs> or when I'm not working. Toodaloo! One take, one wonder. Toodaloo. <laughs> see ya.